All right, hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome to the No Guts, No Galaxy podcast 148. We are your hosts, Phil and Darren. Today is October 19th, 2016. I'd like to say good evening. Darren, how are you doing, man? Good evening. Lately, for some reason, you're, I know it's, it'll be all recorded properly, but you cut in for me halfway through your sentence. So it yeah, it's because I, I un, yeah, I unmute. I know you're yeah. probably like picking your nose like, oh, I've got time. He's not muted, no. you know, like. I, I mentally it's no nose picking two minutes before showtime so <laughs> i'm usually safe with that although now that you're saying uh, that my, my nose totally itches gosh that, dang yeah. it so how you doing man well i'm doing pretty good just busy better than you i know some stuff went down in your life over the last few days <laughs> yeah uh brownie um she's still got the cone of shame on and will be there for a few more days yeah um you know it's crazy because i know dogs eat stupid shit all the time right you know it happens literally shit yes everything literally everything under the sun whether it's a pair of jeans sneakers and yeah for those that are wondering i had to uh brownie my little boston terror she's 14 months um old and she um she started you know i thought she was sick right and with coffee yeah appropriate i got mine too um mine's cool it's got a timberwolf uh thing on it see yeah yeah mm -hmm. um uh, but uh, she started getting, you know, sick, didn't think anything of it, and uh, you don't know, just progress. She just wouldn't keep food down, wouldn't drink, and so I was like, you know, hey, this isn't cool, I really don't want my dog to die. So I took her to the vet Monday morning, and they did x-ray, and we're like, hey, there's something in her stomach, we can't really tell, it's nothing like hard, hard, and I was like, well, shit, and they're like, okay, well, you know, surgery and they're like oh it'll probably be as soon as they drop this number by the way i was not expecting it. i because you know like i I don't know they were like oh it'll be between 35 to 45 hundred dollars and i was like i'm on the phone in bed like you know just like what like <laughs> and uh but you know you gotta do it and it, you know and so we took her and it's crazy because the whole thing happened and uh the the vet called the doctor did the surgery and was like hey she's you know fine there was nothing crazy going on but her stomach was full and you know um we'll have the contents so you can see what it is so you know preventative measures or whatever and um we thought it was from the the couch because she got into our uh, couch pillow which i have no clue how or any of that um it's, it's got a zipper i i don't know my dog's like the raptor on jurassic park um and we thought it was that polyester stuffing. No. And the crazy thing, what it was, is it was part of her chew toy, like those big rope, knotted ropes that you can buy, right? And the, the ends are a little, you know. Oh, man. Lawsuit in the making right here. Well. <laughs> Just kidding. The one that was a part of it, what, what was in her stomach, we had thrown away two months ago because they had torn it apart and it was just strings everywhere. So we torn it apart. And so my theory is, I think she ate it back then. And everything was fine, and it just, for whatever reason, it finally got its way, worked into her GI tract, and that's when it was causing issues, and it blocked everything up. Um, and, uh, yeah, long story short, uh, yeah, not cool, but she's she's doing good. She's got the cone of shame. She's on her pain meds, and um, she's just sleeping and, and relaxing. And, uh, you know, I just want to say thank you again to all of the, the people that showed up yesterday did a like long hour stream and a lot of people to help donate so thank you guys uh, so much for the uh the support so yeah yes indeed um i have had you know i've spent tens of thousands of dollars on pets throughout the years um uh you know no more than i think five thousand maybe a little bit more on any individual but it's always you reach this dilemma like you know if it was a your mother, your brother, your sister, your father, whatever. You, do whatever you, you got to do. Yeah, right? do whatever you get. Where is that line drawn? And now I know plenty of people with, you know, a lot more money than me that have spent a lot more money than me. I live right near uh, UC Davis, which is, if not just domestically, you know, well known as far as a, an animal uh, treatment place worldwide as well, and where they can pull off miracles. And I'm talking just insane stuff when my dog got diabetes we could spend over ten thousand dollars basically giving him you know fake eyes all kinds of stuff um where do you draw that line it's so Eesh. hard I, you well know. you know you know what the shit part about all this is is you're 100 percent right but what happens if you don't have that money i mean yeah, to me 
to me that that was the opener because my wife was like you know you know yeah of course we got to do whatever we got to do she's you know like super you know freaked out and i'm like uh she's like well what happens if you know you can't pay it i'm like your dog dies or you have yeah. to take out a loan and if you can't do <laughs> that your dog dies no obamacare for for the animals yeah, so. I don't I don't know, man. I mean, I know people that are just like super mm. they no emotion about it. They're animals and that's it. Mm -hmm. And I know people to the other end that will spend as much money on them as a person and I can't say they're wrong. I can't say anybody's wrong. It's a personal choice, obviously. Sorry you had to go through that. Yeah. Uh get well. Well, I mean, brown. like like I'm not I wasn't like, "Oh my god, die." Cuz I was like, "Dogs eat shit all the time. It's a normal surgery." And the, even the vet was like, "Yes, we do this all the time." So I wasn't freaked out. I was just more like well, shit, dude, like, really? And we just bought the, like, that's what I thought it was. But anyways, uh, yeah, so my, my past few days have been a little hectic. And my sleep, I think the sleep schedule part has been, because I'm on a weird sleep schedule with the wife, and it got even more messed up, because, anyways. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, um, yeah, crazy. That is what's going on. <laughs> crazy. And, of course, you know, with normal stuff, streaming, and, and uh, you know, uh, doing stuff behind the scenes. But um, I did watch a movie. Uh, that I think you might be interested in, and of course others out there, um, just totally ran across it on Netflix, uh, which by the way, did you know that the star rating on Netflix is not what others think it is? It's what Netflix think you will think it is because that, you're... It, uh, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Dude, like literally like a week ago, my wife and I are going, you know, we we're looking at shows that we know are five star rated shows and it was rated as three or whatever. So that's just netflix interpreting what we think we're gonna yes. rate it wow because based off what that, man. based off what you watch and based off how you rate things not very accurate yeah. well that's the problem is we don't rate things uh -huh. so that's uh -huh. probably yeah we're have you uh, like the system, had your so daughter ever watched out. like little my little pony or whatever and all of a sudden it's like hey <laughs> oh, dude when i turn on netflix all i have is kids shows <laughs> on the top dude like i have to dig to find my shows so i i ran across this uh it's it's uh the movie title is the siege of and i, and I wanna is it uh jadotville um i may pronounce that uh totally it may just be jadotville i don't know uh basically it's about uh um irish um uh, soldiers Back in the day, um, uh, UN peacekeepers sent into Africa, and basically sh just bad things happen. Uh, and it's based on a true story, um, but uh, you know, of course, I I like military. Uh, it's always great uh, movies. It's always great seeing, of course, uh, other you know countries and sort of reenactment and stuff like that. But of course, it yep. is it is not a real documentary. It's a you know Hollywood uh, sort of. But it was sure. a good movie. I liked it um and uh you know never heard of it so i, I will definitely add that to my list yeah. i've got tons to add to my list um me i haven't seen anything good lately i just haven't had the time to go to the theater my wife and i are both jonesing for uh theater popcorn and, and some good movie but there's just nothing you, out you, there right now do you always get popcorn when you go pretty much i we used to get um jalapenos in our popcorn every time but i get really disgusted by the you know the where you get the jalapenos I, anybody can just walk by and spit in them you know <laughs> oh, so i can't i just can't do it uh but recently our favorite uh theater had the jalapenos behind the counter probably saw somebody spitting in them so anyway yes uh absolutely butter popcorn with jalapenos pretty much every time my wife's family is every single time they will it, we just ate dinner dessert whatever doesn't matter dude. popcorn and i'm so weird i don't want any of it I, it's so greasy and nasty and just i i'm like no i i'm good and they're like no you, you and i'm like oh no so i don't yeah. think you're in the majority I, there yeah i'm odd dude uh, I, at home pop cop pop, popcorn sure I don't know. Maybe it's yeah. I don't I don't know. Well, I'm not. You know, you're not no, it's cool. the healthiest at the theaters for sure. It's it's cool. I understand. I'm on, I'm the oddball. But um, I'm looking forward to Star Wars. Obviously, I uh, can't wait for that movie. I think it's going to be. I watched the badass. trailer. Yeah, I mean, I know you. Uh, you're, 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 <laughs> you were like, hey, did you watch the trailer? You're giving all that shit about I was like, not watching the trailer. You didn't want any spoilers, and then ten minutes later, you're like, I'm watching the trailer. I was like, God <laughs> dang it! And it looks so fucking good. You know it what? It does, dude. I, I, to me, it looks like possibly the first 
like the original three obviously it had a dark theme to it as well but of course you know the original three um and i feel like this could potentially be the first star wars movie we see that is dark and is gritty and realistic and it isn't you know like it isn't always a fairy tale and you know the crazy thing is like the original two are dark people are dying literally left and right, right. troopers right in front of your eyes yeah. like and it's just like glossed over like yeah, you know, no, they'll get up later. They're just done, you know, like, um, you know, they'll be having their lunch later. Um, <laughs> but um, I don't know. I, I'm super thrilled. Uh, I, I think another, in, in, you know, intriguing part just from the, the trailers, too, is that it doesn't it's not focused around Jedi, you know, as far yeah. as like and I feel I'd like be totally fine with no Jedi in the movie at all. Yeah. So and it's got, Absolutely. again, not man crush Donnie Yen in it. So. There's that as well, but um, don't worry, guys. The mech porn is coming. In fact, Star Wars has some mech porn. You know, yes, the, it does. The, some in some ways the the original mech. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Obviously, I'm looking forward to John Wick too. I don't know if you catch caught the first one. That, I did. Uh, great movie, in my opinion. Um, so I'm hoping the second one uh, pulls that off. One, one thing I noticed for the first time ever, really, like i don't know even his not so great movies but still decently good i've always watched tom cruise movies and i've always been at least in the back of my mind yeah i'll rent that one or, or whatever watch it on the net uh, if i don't see it in the theaters but i gotta tell you man this new <laughs> i love the title jack reacher never go back sounds so bad it sounds like a fucking 80s you know action did you, flick did you watch like the original the first one no oh it's and, good jack see, but what what i'm feeling though is that it came out right after the announcement of john wick and i'm feeling like tom cruise is just wanting some of that keanu action i don't know maybe it's going to be good but well, just for <laughs> two different things though i mean no obviously but it's just like i don't know it just actually seems weird to me if you haven't seen it watch um Jack i didn't Richard. watch it's first. actually it's actually yeah. quite enjoyable um uh but the thing with like uh to me i'm like i liked uh uh john wick but then the second one coming out i'm like let me guess, he kills a lot of people. Like, how much of a story is there to it? At least the first one. No, dude, the thing is. You don't fuck with the man's dog. He saves lives. You don't, he's, he's, you, don't fuck with the, you don't fuck with the man's dog, <laughs> and you don't fuck with the man's woman. How many wars have started because of that? Troy Maybe fell. Maybe somebody fucks with his gaming computer in this one, you know? <laughs> I don't know, but. <laughs> totally crosses the line. I did like uh, Jack Reacher. I, it, the character itself, the story, the plot, it was actually enjoyable. It's fun to watch. Uh, I like John Wick as well. Uh, obviously, there's not a whole lot of character development. I mean, you just like. The one question I think that opens it up as far as John Wick to me was okay, so you know this guy was like a hitman, but how did he learn and what did he do to get all those skills? So maybe this evolves into that so to me i'm like well you know but yes i like to bandit says they both were just jacked from uh taken which may might be the case i don't know <laughs> anyway I, I i like good action movies so yeah, hopefully yeah. They're, they're both good. good if you haven't seen it you you won't actually be disappointed and and you're right you know tom cruise uh oblivion uh, all, all like the i've side, enjoyed them all right the uh live die repeat uh isn't that the second title what was the first one i've got it uh oh right yeah i don't know whatever that was, was actually right. enjoyable like it, um i think there's not a whole lot of movies that i don't like with tom cruise like uh uh so yeah yep yeah R risky business yeah all right so next the next medium reading uh as i've been mentioning i'm um i'm still about i'm about halfway through thunder rift right now totally enjoying that book even more it's so weird you know how many, how many times how many times I've read have, you, have you read it over <laughs> i don't know do you easily pitch, over do you 10, picture potentially over 20 now that it's the mechs are in mwo like when it talks oh, about dude. the marauders being in the cave and stuff are you like the, the, well, in the, the locust and... i think my mind blends them together you know i love the the original artwork and especially the stuff that was uh borrowed from robotech and so forth so i think for the most part i go with the original look in my head the original shadowhawk marauder wasp stinger now obviously we don't have those in mwo yet but uh yeah i think i go with original artwork um but it's just every little aspect dude when they're describing being in the cockpit when they're describing warfare um you know the combat when just everything i'm paying attention to things more i think than i did when i first started reading the the book but yeah it's been a lot of times loving it um but the reason i do bring up the book and i'm and i'm continuing through these is because we were supposed to have randall on the uh, podcast today 
Randall was out. If you don't know, the Pacific Northwest had some crazy storms for like a week or more or less or something like that. But people were out of power for a long time. Randall was out of power for like a week or so. And so uh, he just got power back yesterday. He was totally behind. He's going to reschedule and be on our podcast next week. And there's a lot of cool stuff to talk about, new stuff, including I think today they even released a new book maybe. Um, I think I saw that when I woke up. Uh, Crescent Hawk maybe. Anyway, uh, he will be on, confirmed, October 26th. That's a week from today. So sorry about that. Those of you that might have been expecting him here today, he will be here with us next week. Yeah, how many people came here and they're like, oh, well, he's not coming. See you. <laughs> and I'm Peace. out of here. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's that. What about uh, what about games? You do anything with games? Um, I know you've been playing uh, your Huntsman a little bit, right? Oh, dude. Uh, I, I knew it. I called it before, you know. Um, I knew I was going to enjoy it. 50 tonner, um, pod space galore, uh, good amount of speed, maneuverability. Um, by the way, this is not a model. Uh, I forgot who sent me this. Um, Oh, shit, something just fell off. Um, it's a uh, it's a toy, I guess, uh, of the Warhammer or the I guess the oh, which one was this called? Um, the Robotech or whatever. The Tomahawk. Yeah, I got a, I yeah, got a couple of those. The Tomahawk it even has a dude yeah. in here, guys. Um, my my daughter took mine from me. <laughs> You're right. She loves it. Mm -hmm. uh, but um. Yeah, no, uh, as far as uh, the Huntsman uh, played it, I think my favorite setup, there was a few. Um, your Peep Goss uh, was fantastic on it. Um, it pretty much can do anything that the Hunchback 2Cs can do. But the difference between the Hunchback 2C, they're both 50 tonners, is there's a few key distinct differences between it and the Huntsman. Well, you want to get to that when we get to the Huntsman? I was just saying what video games you're oh, playing okay. right now. Yeah, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> we, we are, we I got, I, yeah, uh, no, and it's not replacing the cicada. Don't worry, guys. That You can't that's, You can't live without your heart. It's just, you know, um, unless you get Are you playing anything one. else besides MW, MWO right now? Funny enough, yes, or I'm about to, um, and I probably will be streaming this, uh, but I uh, actually have the CD in my hand or right here. Dawn of War, uh, the Warhammer 40k uh, RTS. So I bought these and I played. Uh, I have this, the expansion, the Winter Assault, and Dark Crusade. And uh, I thought I lost them, um, but I found them and I found the keys. And I was able to contact uh, Sega, who now owns the uh, rights, and get new stream key, uh, actual Steam keys. That's you, awesome, dude. Because uh, the retail ones don't work with Steam. And so now I've downloaded them, installed them, and I'm actually looking forward to playing it. So, um, yeah. And Dawn of War 3, uh, there's a trailer. I, it comes out either next year, 2017 or 2018 or whatever. But, uh, yeah. Paylor loves Dan of War. I haven't tried that series. <laughs> um, that sounds good. Yeah, I've been watching the uh, people talking about, obviously, uh, that series recently. With the new one coming out, um, I personally, finally, after, I don't know, like 520-something hours, finally finished the main storyline of DL uh, Fallout 4. No DLC. I haven't even touched the DLC yet. Um, so that game definitely got my money's worth. And then, basically, right now, looking forward to Battlefield 1. I think you'll be playing that with me. We got a couple of our other buddies that are getting it as well. I, so, I keep getting PM'd by uh, Dr. Demos. Yes. Like, dude... Dude, dude, dude. And I'm like, I'm not buying the ultimate edition or any of that. I'm buying the standard edition. You know, but, I, uh, I still have a, my main gripe with <laughs> is why do you have the maps behind a fucking paywall? Yeah, I know. Who, who's well for now? They're not, though. So now's the time to play it whose when, they're, decision, when they're not behind a paywall. Like it makes somebody in a suit. You're li hmm. like content vehicle i don't know i'm not gonna get i'm not gonna i'm not yeah, it's yeah, dude, so there's stupid nothing there's that. nothing I, I can just do it and great but uh yeah that's pretty but much but let's get into you wanted to jump into the huntsman that is the first topic under the october 18th patch which was yesterday we had a huge patch um i'll link the patch notes in a moment but the first topic the first big thing obviously in that patch the huntsman so yeah. why don't you continue your conversation about the huntsman people are comparing it uh to the hunchback 
Um, I no, heard a and, lot of comparisons. Yeah, you should. Um, I mean, it's it's sort of like the Kodiak or Direwolf. I mean, there's you know you've got two fifty tonners, two different types of mechs. By the way, you've got um, the Huntsman, which is an Omni mech, which means its equipment is fixed, whereas the Hunchback is a you know two C version, so it's not. Um, there's some key differences. One, you don't have to take all five jump jets uh, on the Hunchback two Cs, right? Or four, I think technically. Uh, you can only take two or three uh, or one. Um, you have to, obviously, it's fixed uh, on the Huntsman. The other thing, too, is um, with the Huntsman is the 250XL compared to the Hunchback 2C, which goes all the way up to 275. So technically, the Hunchback 2Cs are technically quicker or can be if you so decide. And then when you compare setups, like we've seen two peeps on the, the turning and stuff, um, the Hunchback will probably still do that better as far as just it has more payload space because it doesn't have the jump jets to be able to put towards heat sinks. Um, uh, they're both high mounts. Uh, the shoulder mounts are both, you don't really have to worry about that. Uh, now, the, the sort of differences I look at is um, the physical geometry between the two. Um, and that's where I think the Huntsman will be better is, uh, as far as being able to hit and like core out. Uh, or hit uh, because of physical size, but again, it goes back to that speed advantage of the Hunchback 2C. So maybe that that's that's a difference too. But um, yeah, man, really enjoyable for uh, a mobility player like yourself. What's more important, the extra speed of the Hunchback or the jump jets on the Huntsman? Um, I would say speed first, but the Huntsman are. I mean, it's like sort of like the Nova. I mean, 87 kph, 90 kph is fast enough where, right? you know, like... You're still mobile. Yeah, like, you. to me, yes, it would be nice to be able to drop that ton engine and go a little bit faster, but it's not hugely detrimental. Um, at least, uh, yeah, so anyways, I've been pleasantly surprised. Um, ran a few different builds, uh, UX. I did two UX5s, three mediums. I did... Um, you know, uh, Goss and four mediums. I, I did SR, uh, four SRM fours and four medium pulse. Pretty much the cool thing with the um, the Huntsman is it has a plethora of hard points. Now, the difference is when you compare some of those to the Hunchback 2C, like for instance, the Hunchback 2C, because it does have that few extra tons advantage uh, because it doesn't have to take those jump jets, um, you, you can invest in that bigger engine or you can invest in more tonnage uh, for ammo. So like dual UAC-10s, it's actually somewhat sort of more viable on the Hunchback 2C. Also, you can't do dual uh, uh, UAC-10s in the right torso of the Huntsman. You just can't, there's not enough crit space. So there are some things that, uh, you know, the 2C does better, but it is also blockier and shit compared to the Huntsman. And the Huntsman looks fantastic. I know that doesn't really matter from a gameplay perspective but it, i think are you saying the hunchback does not look look at it right there dude right in our stream picture the hunchback is badass too. no i agree it's the 2c been... not the original the 2c, oh, oh, 2C. Gotcha, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah it's um that is the other thing i've been talking to a lot of people like uh Dallas and a few other streamers were have been playing with it uh they got their care packages and uh to me you know i'm intersphere all the way the uh, Huntsman looks very inner sphere. It's more um, angular or whatever. And so I think that's what ap it appeals to me. So visually, very appealing. I love it. Uh, obviously, Alex did an amazing job, as he always did in the, the modelers Especially and textures. If you look at the original artwork of the... Oh, my God. You, you, know what, you know what's great about this, too? Just from the, the nerd in me. <laughs> the original. The, the uh, Huntsman um, is actually in the novels a ton. Um, and we've never seen it in MechWarrior 2. It wasn't MechWarrior Mercy. It was never in Mech 3, Mech 4. Maybe the I mech... love getting these mechs that haven't been in any of the other games. Yeah. And they're in the novels. You read about them. You understand why, like, they got their particular name. Um, it, you know, as far as, like, uh, the IS name, I'm just going to pull up uh, really quick. Um, I'm probably going to butcher this, uh, but it's called the Nabori, is it? Yeah, good luck with that. Nabori Nin. Nabori Nin. Nin. Uh, it might, uh, obviously, Somebody it might. Correct us. Someone who's Japanese can probably be like, no, Phil, it sounds like this. You just but, totally Americanized it, but yeah. yeah. Um, and it was, the reason it was called that was the flag bearer, right? Because it has the... the uh, Which and, explains the cockpit item. Yeah, and so anyways, the original artwork compared to Fantastic, even, yeah, I, I'm... 
he switched up the legs uh to the digigrade which is like the so good i, I love it um animations feel good um i played a lot last night uh got some of them i was working on elites already um but uh yeah no happy with the performance i i figured it was gonna be good just because of client tech 50 tonner into a pharaoh plus jump jets uh the only thing it doesn't have that would have made it just ridiculous is ecm like if it have had ecm yeah that would have been crazy bad yeah, that would have been fun, but uh, yeah, no, the, yeah, yeah, good, good Mac, fun Mac. Yeah. People are having a good time with it. I'm uh, as always looking forward to see where it stands in about uh, a week or two when builds start showing up on the websites and so forth. Um, but yeah, uh, looks like it's gonna be a really fun Mac. Terra Therma update. Terra Therma got a complete redux. Um, obviously, you did the video for our YouTube page. Uh, what do you think of playing on it? Uh, probably got it a few times, right? Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, just real quick, did, they didn't do the hotfix, right? I don't know. Let me see. Yeah. So if any of you are getting in Terra Therma and there's a constant beeping, no. that uh, dropship beeping, um, that is a bug. Uh, it will be, yeah. Uh, <laughs> in the entire match. Uh, I did see it go off uh, sometimes for some people. Uh, um, oh, sorry. That was flashbacks. He's just displaying how uh, annoying I, it is. I didn't. Is it crazy? I thought it was a part out, of the map. Right? I thought it was a part of the map. Like even creating the video. Yeah, some people thought it was. I like. I was like, oh, and it didn't bother me. Like it's like, oh, is there gonna be something that happens when the like? Does it like, you know, like, you know, clear the area? You know, explosion happening. I I didn't mind it, um, as much. I don't know. Call me crazy. Yes. Uh, it, it it Tina Therma hashtag Tina Therma. But um, yeah. There's a, it's a lot of new. Uh, well, obviously, completely redesigned. So it is not just an update some people are just saying it's a completely new map which i tend to agree with um no you know volcano in the middle central point that's yeah that's off to the corner they basically took yep. that it's actually still there technically up in the corner and then they re here's the thing um i like it if you're having performance issues by the way right click on your um when you open up the client uh run the uh repair tool and just have it clear out your uh shader cache if you don't want to do that, you can actually clear it out. It's not where you installed the game. It's in your user profile for Windows. Um, and you can delete the shader uh, folder. That's helped some people. Um, I haven't had any issues with performance, actually. Um, when I did that video, I actually had everything cranked up. Everything. Um, and didn't have any issues. As far as uh, gameplay, 100% improvement, if not, in, in my opinion. And it's funny because you do have this very unique respect you drop and everybody wants to get to the enemy as quick as possible which usually that's right down the middle the only problem is if you go right down the middle you have one side that sort of has the higher ground and you have one side that's coming up well it both funnels you into this corridor and there's plenty of pathways to go flanking um, on left and right and even wider flanks too and that's what i ran into is a lot of the times if i lost on that map it was generally because the enemy team maneuvered or if we won it was generally because we were maneuvering and what i did is i'd go to like echo five great engagements uh some people were like oh man just nothing but just uh you know long range comments some people were like nothing but brawling i saw everything I last that. night I like i that. i saw oh shit we just got flanked i wasn't paying attention um yeah. almost got you Taragato, if you're there um Domo Taragato. but yeah it's 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 funny how personal experiences become the only experience but you're right, right. There's, I, i'm hearing the same thing i'm he hearing a lot of uh uh long range combat a lot of brawling so it seems pretty well mixed uh there's a def decent amount of cover um this, i know th to oh. me what makes this work so well is that it's flat as far as the, it's not like uh, you're having to go up and it's this pin like that's one of my problems with caustic is it forces the behavior the the NASCAR is forced because of the, the, the caldera behavior. And what I like about this is it's generally flat. Now, granted, you've got little ups and downs, but in general, and there's so many pathways um, visually, it looks amazing. The sounds look, uh, you know, sounds amazing. It's probably one of the most visceral sounding maps. Um, which is great. Uh, and I think whoever did those things, take that, apply it to future and or improvements on others. Which too. I'm sure is, yeah. Yeah, which of course, you know, duh. More breakable you know, but, terrain this time. Um, which I, I like. To, I want to see continued uh, updates with more breakable terrain as we go. 
yeah, standing still, uh, you know, if you are standing, the chat is right. Um, it is definitely a good map. I played Domination on it. Um, it was interesting uh, because the Domination point is right in the middle where I was talking about where you have uh, the central paths. But again, I think a more mobile team realizes that and you can flank people. And it is sort of a darker map as well. Uh, you can use thermal. Uh, by the way, I know some people like you can't actually turn on thermal and use it. It doesn't just white out. I think it was reversed or something, right? I Wasn't thermal just inversed? I, reversed? I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I know that they've uh, improved thermal and especially hot. So, yeah, no, I like it. Thumbs up. It gets my approval. I played it a ton last night, um, especially if you were to say, oh, would you want the old one? And there's people that are like, I love the old one. And I'm like, no now that's always going to be the case you know here's the thing that i am torn uh, torn on should pgi leave the old maps in for private matches private matches and yeah. and take them out of the rotation because hey let's just say a, a league mrbc uh arhat whoever says hey we're gonna throw that wrench into the mix every once in a while or we want it uh you know and uh now the question is again it is the map file even there? Can they do that? I, I don't know, but... Um... I know, and it's, this isn't to throw Dennis under the bus, but I know Dennis had some issues. He's the art director with uh, using some of the original maps because he just wasn't happy with them as you know a, a final product or whatever. And um, he may not be the one holding that from happening. He may not have it at all, but... Um, you know, and I can understand that from a creator. I'm sure you can as well. You look at your early work and you look to at something, you know, three, five years later well, or whatever. Take it out of to... normal rotation and the, no, the general populace. I'm actually a proponent you know. for that as well. I've, I've heard from enough people that uh, want it in private matches. I agree with that. I would like to see the original Forest Colony, yeah. uh, both of them, uh, Forest Colony Snow as well, original, uh, you know, Frozen City, uh, etc. And uh, even the... Uh, yeah, caustic would be good. I don't know. It would be just fun. There, you know, there, there, there's some uh, nostalgia there as well. But uh, anyway, private matches. I think it's cool. Uh, we'll keep working that angle. See if we can get any movement on it. But who knows? Anyway, yeah, that was so. We had the Huntsman. We had Terratherm update, and then we had obviously uh, a bunch of new mechs as well. Um, or not and I saw mechs, these everywhere. Variants. By the way, no because doubt. you can't fucking miss them. Have you I seen them? Their, their camo patterns. Oh yeah. my god, the most hideous. Psychedelic. It, it, actually, I was like, who Except got it? Except everybody is figuring out how to do black, black, and then a color, and it kind of. Who gets got into the, Darren's the bag? Like that's what I was thinking. Who got into Darren's bag? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that is not oregano. Um, yeah, so there's the blackjack BJ2. There's a cataphract 3L Hellbringer F variant. The stalker. I saw the stalker everywhere. Yes, a lot of them. Um, then there was two summoners, the, the F and the M variant. And then, uh, there was also some, uh, I guess the Atlas and Kodiak had cockpit items. They were, um, a little bit, they, they were painted as yeah. opposed to the regular ones that you can buy. Um, and, the, and they do the, uh, the animation. Uh, yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. And of course the Gatling, the silver, I think it's called silver Gatling Warhorn. Uh, pretty cool. Looks like a Gatling gun with horns on it spinning around. Anyway, some nice customer appreciation rewards and so forth. Seeing a lot of and, that out there. And what's interesting about those is the summoners. It has a left to right torso energy slot as well, which opens the door to... Okay, so obviously dual peep setups on summoners are really um, used a lot. Well, now you can strip all the armor on both arms and still get the benefit in the left to right torso. So that's that's where those... Uh, the Hellbringer um, torso as well. The Stalker, obviously, being ECM, I saw them everywhere. And you can do long range LRMs, you can do SRMs. I saw a lot of both being used, um, which an ECM Stalker all of a sudden in your face. Um, the Cataphract, I didn't see out there. I did see the BJ2. Um, I saw a combination. I saw some people trying to do uh streak twos uh i saw people do srm sixes i saw a combination sometimes fours and energy um i think the bj is going to suffer from a close range brawl setup just because it's the bj it's very flat easy to, to aim for um but uh yeah it's there i'm you hearing can't... a lot of love for the the cataphract 3l that... <laughs> yeah i don't but... know why but i'm seeing it on twitter a lot and... no no I, I don't i all i know I don't... is you can't miss them because no they're doubt. hideous as far as their color pattern. 
I don't know who came up with that. Like the loyalty of the cicada, right? Or that or the cicada, the executioner. Oh, there's something else I'm missing. Zeus. And there's one more. I want to say whoever something. whoever came up with the pattern, the, the the patterns, right on, dude. I love them, man. <laughs> you would. <hippie. laughs> um, and then the new cockpit items and uh, decals. Uh, first off. Yeah, my these, new, are, these are separate from the, the loyalty. These are just new with my this new patch. favorite Warhorn. And it's Jack Lantern, dude, right? that thing is it just is awesome. Like that is such a good Warhorn. If you haven't seen it, guys, check out the Jack Lantern Warhorn. I think you can test it, right? You yes, can test, you can preview yeah. it. It's <laughs> it is so cool. It's now my my yeah, it, and I mean and last night like there was one I had like a seven kill streak last night, almost eight, and it was just like Back, oh, to back to back to back to back to, and it's just going. I I got two kills so quickly. It like missed one. Like, right. but um, yeah, no. Uh, and then of course we've got a bunch of the unit decals. And the cool thing about these are, at least you know, for lore, lores like me is to actually see canon lore specific. The Force Tal Seti Rangers. The Air uh, is it Eridani Light Horse. Eridani Light. I know some people say Eridani. Um uh storms metal thunder and a bunch of the other ones as well and there was a whole bunch there was at least like 20 or something like that yeah. uh and uh, and i'd like it. to i'd like to give a quick shout out to the individual who's doing those uh <clears throat> mark hayden you are fantastic yep. you beautiful bastard thank you um and i know also uh alex uh iglesias is also helping out with those as well i don't know in, i don't think in those particular ones but um uh, yeah so Hayden is uh, also a community member who became an employee for uh, PGI. There's a few of them out there and uh, does great work. And yeah, it is fun seeing uh, the, the lore-based decals added. Um, I agree, no doubt about it. We had some mech lab optimizations, quicker loading, logging in. The biggest in. one right there is qu the, the quicker loading time when you're logging in. When they fixed the saving time, yeah, the connecting. It kind of got... <laughs> it, it was like a water balloon where if you squeeze one end, it pops up on another end. And it, it was feel, felt like that's what happened. And and it it only made it more apparent too when the save times went quicker because then it was yeah. like you you couldn't like okay connecting and the save times were long so uh it got like half cut and then you're just like God why does this take forever? And for those that have you know first world mech problems, 300 mechs it takes even longer. Um, it it's you know it's not instantaneous which you know obviously is never going to happen i don't think but um definitely faster i noticed it um purchasing faster with less refresh um to me the save times were a game changer like that i still think that was probably one of the biggest things uh in the past uh few patches so yes I absolutely agree. I love optimizations that make things quicker. Um, the purchasing ones are cool too with less of those refreshes. So thank you, whoever's working on those. Um, there were some quirk adjustments, right? With the uh, UAC jam chance yep. uh, on, yep. on some And X. I'm going to go ahead and warn people there are changes coming tomorrow as far as November patch. There's actually a few things coming in November patches. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and... Wait, you're, you're saying they're going to be announced tomorrow? No, I'm saying there are November adjustments coming to tomorrow. No, just in general. I, I was okay. I was you, saying you prepare tomorrow, but I was saying just prepare thyselves. Prepare thyselves. Gotcha. There are so things November coming in November, which sounds more significant than just UAC jam chance. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Prepare thyselves. People. I just I just saw jam chance, and I know it's been a bunch of discussion everywhere, but um, right. Yeah, so there are changes coming. Bigger changes incoming. Yeah. So, and then there was, uh, let's see, some mech pattern retrofits. So this was, you know, again, they're still just retrofitting mechs with patterns that they didn't have before. So the Blackjack Firestarter, Highlander, Jaeger mech, Quick Draw, and the Victor can now equip all the standard and Intersphere faction pat patterns, which is cool. Um, it's good to have those and, finally. And no, we're not talking about um, uh, energy draw. It's all in my own chat, so you, that's not... Correct. Again, just and just to emphasize on that, um, ED is not being pushed until it's ready and if it's ready. So just keep that in mind. All right. Um, let's see. We a bunch have of other, basically there was a bunch of other um, 
I don't think I want to get into all the individual stuff, no, but a lot of to. other fixes, bugs, etc. <laughs> so just uh, check out the patch notes. I linked them in chat. Tons of stuff. Uh, because they're monthly now, the patches are usually much more significant and have a lot of stuff in there. So check those out. Can we, um, you know, I know that the next uh, haunted event, haunted and hunted, uh, is going on. Um, let's take a moment. Uh, I think a lot of people enjoyed the previous event we had. Um, and I think the majority enjoyed it. I think some people, of course, you can't please them. You're talking about Mechtoberfest. Yeah, Mechtoberfest, I think, was a success. And I think that, um, just like we mentioned last time, I think if they took that and they expanded on it and made it some type of automated system, too, where you did have dailies, if you will, and those dailies were different for everybody, that it could help, obviously, with, like, matchmaker as well, or, you know, it didn't interfere uh, per se. Um, but to me, I think Oktoberfest just sort of highlights where y you can have, you know, long term goals for a month and it gives people enough time. It doesn't flood the queues with a particular play style or max or weight classes. Um, and I think a lot of people liked it. And now I, I do know I say that I don't speak for everyone um, out there, but the general consist consensus I heard was yes we liked it this is the first one i've actually enjoyed um so i think i think, I think, I think we're totally aware of how much everybody likes the long events and i think pretty much for the most part you know i talk with matt and tina every day matt is the guy that does most of the event work um you know whenever they can i mean you know he doesn't just roll dice and or throw darts at a dartboard for these events there he, he thinks them out every month what's Watches coming other next games, month what, yeah yeah totally i mean he's very much involved well, in other games look, look events at, that they do quick strides just says it worked i played more in the last month than the two months previous sure. so i think they expanded on it i mean if you look at this new event um which by the way i talked to matt about it today tina had a huge hand in the haunted and hunted event creating it and coming up with the ideas so kudos to you tina therma um, so basically this has like three separate parts to it. The first started yesterday, October 18th goes till November 1st, which has a daily match score challenge. So it's basically a daily, um, Terra Therma Redux challenge, a Huntsman pilot challenge and hunt the Huntsman challenge. That's all October 18th, to November 1st. Then separately, October 20th to October 25th, there's a Huntsman leaderboard. And then October 25th, and this is a big one to November 1st that people love the trick or treat loot bags, which is basically just another grab bag style event that everybody loves, lots of free stuff. So this is like a three in one, or it, maybe even uh, you could call it a six in one because the you know the first thing has so many parts to it. Um, really big event. I love this stuff. You know what? I personally, they could do this big every month, all month, and I would be good with that. I think events are wonderful. I do think they increase just like uh, whoever that was in chat that was saying that. Sorry, I'm not on chat, so I can't see. Uh, I do think they increase uh, people playing, well, whether you're aren't talking you, dailies or weeklies. You're, we've talked about this, you personally. You are yeah. OCD when it comes to totally. daily rewards. Like, how many games game have we... I like, and they put dailies in it that are enjoyable and and reward well enough that's i mean it's they know this is this is psychology man this isn't like they're just you know, pulling oh, stuff out of their for, ass they know exactly yeah, free, how to get us. free to play marketing it goes into uh psychology um player oh, yeah. dynamic i mean yeah it, it, it you goes dangle in a little bit of that uh internal uh or, or in-game currency or or some you know weapons or mechs or whatever some, so, you I'm know there. what some people just don't like seeing a red x and they're like yeah ah. I, that's another issue the, the whole red x thing um but Anyway, looks like a wonderful event, haunted and hunted. It's going on now. Started yesterday, and uh, most of it lasts all the way till November first. So another long one. Then Scary. I'm, then I'm yeah. sure we'll see a, a, a November, and then you know December. Yeah. Oh yeah, we've got uh, we've got a lot of good events coming. And then up, New Year. Yes, it's gonna be. <laughs> this, these are the these are the these are fun months, man. In in Mech Warrior, uh, definitely looking forward to it. And then. Yep. Russ kind of just snuck it out there. Well, okay. Uh, it, yeah. Do I have to say this again? Guys. I don't know. We're going to have a moment with Phil. Guys, there will be more mech packs. There will be more, a mech pack and more. every month because Russ has told you this There's already. There's very few things that we can guarantee, but that is one of them. Don't be if, if surprised. Saying, what? Another mech pack? <laughs> You just need to, they need to stop that shit. They need, 
go go work on your neck. Go, go work on CW. <laughs> Inge- Alex Iglesias, exactly. stop you freaking draw. Don't put that pencil <laughs> down. Put that but stylist. anyway. No. And, yeah, and the, the, I think the bigger, more people complain lately, not about there being more mech packs. I think people have mostly got over that. But it's it's that, for example, in chat right now. Uh, what about light mechs? What about inner sphere mechs? What about this mech? That, that's a valid criticism. A bigger, yeah. I, I, I'm like, okay, yeah, I get that. But why are you fucking surprised when he's like, hey, guys, just to let you know. Um, and I remember this because he said on the top, uh, you know, mech packs are, you know, one of our primary, you know, ways of income. So we're going to be doing that. We're going to be breaking it down. We're going to, you know, blah, blah, blah. He said that how many times? Why are you surprised? Now, again, I think there is a critique of saying, well, what mechs are coming out? I, uh, Man, I want that Wasp Stinger pack. You know it. The, the bro the bro mechs, they, they got to come out together. Wasp Stinger, two new 20 tonners. I think uh, it, it needs to happen. Well, you didn't get it this time. Instead, no, didn't get it this time. you've got a clan 90 tonner, the Supernova. Yeah, now th- now I'm going to do a quick uh, lore moment brought to you by Sarna.net. Just real quick, guys, I'll let you uh, just this is obviously doesn't necessarily translate to MWO, but gives you an idea of the lore behind the mech um, and what its purposes were for. And it does actually translate a little bit and we get in- can get into that. A mech feared by many inner sphere pilots, the supernova seems to be an advanced version of the Black Hawk, though it was actually developed before that venerable Omni mech. Plans to replace the King Crab's loadout with clusters of large lasers grew from a shortage of autocannon ammunition. Shortage of, an- of ammunition. That's a, a big part right there in the design of the supernova. The first prototypes met with little success due to the King Crab's integral ferrofibrous armor but gave rise to a lighter and leaner new design. It has an average speed for an assault, and I think this will be an issue for some people, maybe. Keep in mind, it is 90 tons. With a top speed of 54 kph, uh, Phil, you can tell me what the top speed is going to be in-game with all the upgrades or whatever, if you know. Provided by a standard fusion engine, mobility is further increased with jump jets, making it capable of 90-meter leaps. It is built, and I think in-game that translates to three jump jets max you're able to load on. It is built on a standard chassis with 14.5 tons of standard armor providing protection. Just like the Blackhawks Prime variant, it is made to survive long battles without depending on supply lines, a.k.a. ammo. So that is the lore behind it. Thank you, Sarna.net. Um, yeah, I mean, I, ba- I basically, I think the big points with the Supernova are that it's mostly an energy boat. Uh, there's a couple variants that you know, go off a little bit. Uh, the hero has ballistics. Heroes um, has ballistics. And there's and a few of the other set of missiles. Yeah. No energy. And then the SNV or the, the Supernova A variant has energy and missiles. Yep. Um, so a couple changes. But uh, what do you know about the Supernova? What are your thoughts on it? Um, I mean, 90 tonner. Um, I think the direct comparison would be to like the Highlander 2C, um, the Highlander. Uh, off the top of my head, um, I think in some ways it will be better than the Highlander 2C from just like the Hunchback 2C versus the Huntsman, where you have something that's locked, fixed geo as far as uh, engine, as far as jump jets, if it has it. Um, but as far as XL is going to be a go to, Clan Tech, you, survivable, you can take that. Um, I think that's going to be big. Uh, the the iconic one that everyone knows has the six ER large lasers, which sure you can alpha that, <laughs> see what happens to you. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think it really depends on um, the hard point placements. I mean, just based on the the looks of it, arms being lower slung, but we don't know how big that is. Uh, what that means is how much face time you have to be able to bring that to bear. That's one of the issues of like the king crab, right? Is lower slung arms. Um. Uh, uh, sorry, puppy. Someone agreed. Yeah, yeah. Come here, come here. Yeah, you want to say hi to everyone live? It's a bunch of people because you can't play. They can't. Cone of shame engaged. Um, but yeah. So I think it'll be a good addition. Um, I knew this one was coming out. We knew it was coming out. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, aesthetically, so what do you think on the look, yeah, aesthetically, it looks amazing. Now, the supernova was always one of those like it, it already sort of looked good, especially um, my favorite piece of artwork here. I'll, I'll drop it in chat. Um, this one always looked very uh, you as far as like updated, anyways. I'm dropping that for you so you can see that one. Um, 
to me that always looked sort of modern and sleek, right? Uh, very high tech looking. Um, yeah, but, it's uh, not like the line art from the early '80s. Yeah, no, it it definitely was not. And uh, as far as actual performance game, I I don't know. Um, I'd have to I'd have to see it when it you know as we get closer. But as far as the artwork, um, looks awesome. I'm just yeah. So right it, it, again, it's 90 ton. It's not an Omni Mech. Uh, standard variants are the SNV one, three, and A. Uh, reinforcements are the B and the C. The hero is the boiler, which is, first of all, appropriate boiler for, I think, most of the variants, but I don't think it's actually appropriate for the hero. Well, now, I don't know the lore behind that, but it, the, the hero doesn't have any energy hard points. So, well, it does. Yeah. It does. It has three in the right torus. So I'm looking at it. It's got the two ballistic, one in each arm. It's got dual. Oh, am I mistaken? A dual UAC 20s. Uh, it has uh, a large pulse in the right torso. Oh, you're ammo. right. Yeah, yeah. And then a, a three that. missile. And, and okay. again, looking at it, um, out of the, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then if you do get the special um, of the one, um, it's, yeah, I mean, uh, the SV-1, the primary drawback would just be arm-mounted, basically Nova, Blackhawk, however you want to say it. Um and again, it's not an Omnimech, so the Omnipods aren't swappable. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's jump jet capable. That's a that's a bonus to all of them. Again, uh, 325 is max, so I guarantee you'll see XL 325s on all of them. There's really no reason not to uh, for Clan Tech. Um, yeah, those two ballistic. That basically means right torso. You may see, uh, you know, peep Goss uh, setups, uh, large pulse Goss setups. Um. Yeah, uh, the C has two energy in each uh, torso as well. Actually, that's that's another thing. Depending on how high those mounts are, uh, and there is of course um, the A with the two missile per torso as well. So I'm sure you'll that one has alarm twenties with Artemis. Oh, PSA announcement by the way. Let me just uh, I'm gonna be someone's mech bro out there. Um, currently, LRM 20s have the worst spread in the game. If you're going to take LRMs, take LRM 15s with Artemis. It's the exact same tonnage, if not maybe a ton less. And you're going to have better damage and faster firing rate than you do with LRM 20s. Just a PSA announcement. It'll help you out, MacBro. Take LRM 15s, and uh, hopefully that gets fixed. The more in the you know. Ding. <laughs> all right. Uh, no mask or ECM variants. All nope. variants are jump jet capable. Yep. And uh, early adopter rewards include, you know, the uh, normal cockpit items, custom cockpit items, so forth. What I really like as far as the early adopter rewards is the mushroom cloud decal or decal. Of I course. think it looks cool. It's decal. Yeah. We're right. They're wrong. <laughs> I wonder if any other country calls them decals. But anyway, um, that is the supernova. Um, and I guess it's uh, back to that point of waiting for the next announcement. What's the next one going to be? Oh, I know. Um, yep. Uh, all right. And of course, the clan heroes collection is still out there. Um, it's the, you know, clan invasion wave one max, all the heroes for that Timberwolf, storm crow, dire wolf, et cetera. So be sure to check that out. Ooh. MWO Mercs Ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. regional finals. Yeah. Now this next part, I'm, I'm kind of actually trying to hurry this along now because I just noticed the time and you and I have an appointment. So, um, th but this is big. So. We just got through a weekend of pretty much nonstop uh, MWO World Championships 2016 regional finals. We finished the qualifiers a while back uh, and then just had an amazing, so good yeah. weekend of these regional finals. It was so much fun watching all those matches starting from last Friday all the way through Monday night where when we finished the North America or the Americas uh, finals. And wow, is all yeah. I can say. Um, just amazing performances real quick. I'm just going to announce the finalists from each region and then we can do some quick discussion about maybe particular matches. But the North American finalists and, and showing up in Vancouver, Imperial, I don't think there was much doubt that that was going to happen. Uh, they were definitely favored uh... to win. Well, I, I'm, we had tons of people, you know, uh, cheering on their favorite teams, uh, SJR, 228, et cetera, a lot of great teams. And, and they were a contender, yes, yes. Yeah. But I think there was a lot, they were favored. Yes. Um, 
and then uh, EU time zone, Eon Synergy, also great players, enjoyed watching them over the weekend and everybody else from EU. And then Oceanic, uh, Asia Oceanic region. It is a 228th Wild Ones. Now we have, you know, obviously NGNG TV streamer uh, Jay-Z is on that team and, yep. and several other people that we know. It's going to be awesome to see all these people at Metcon for the finals. Um, it was almost, there was for a while, uh, hashtag 228th versus 228th. Yeah. Um, which would it have been, you and, know, would have been amazing. You know, again, I going and watching, um, I watched uh, all of those rounds that night um, up into the wee hours. Uh, EMP versus SJR, very close. Um, there was, just, and, and the difference is just small mistakes cost the matches. And I mean, and that's, that's the difference is who makes less mistakes. And that's not being critical. It's not pointing a finger. It's just, that's the reality that these guys play in. And uh, EMP uh, knocking SJR out, and then SJR had to play 228. And, you know, you go in there, and, you know, 228's the underdogs, right? They, they you know, and um, they just have amazing performances. Um, and then they knock out SJR. And you're like, holy shit. You know, I think they were the fifth seed. Um, and then, to me, there was the final, the, the EMP versus 228, to me... There was two distinct times in the first match that cost them the match. And again, this is just from my point of view watching. And it was at the very beginning, uh, one of their Jenners got hit with a, a long range shot, took out half his weapons, you know, from the, it was like right torso. And then those two Jenners. I think that was Uncle Russ or something like that. Decided to go and try to cap uh, that outside cap, and they ran into the other lights. But they had a decision they could have pulled away, but they would have lost, you know, the potential. But so right off the bat, they were down two light mechs. That was the very first match, and I feel like that was, you know, what what cost them there. On the second battle, on, on term line, they actually it went on for a while. Um, they were trading long range with uh, EMP. And then they got into a position where all the mechs were in a good position, caps and everything, but their two Kodiaks were just in no man's land. And as soon as EMP saw that, and literally I remember watching because they were getting shot from the, the ridge up here and then from the left down here and they got taken out and boom, just like that, capitalized EMP rolled in and now you're down two of your assaults and there's nothing. And so it, like little things like that, and that's not being making Absolutely. fun of them that's not nope. being hey, they it's got just there, man they got to the and, finals and the but regional finals. The, the and also on the flip side for those you know like for me watching like emp's play um damn good team of just being able to adjust i mean uh two to eight tried to do the range thing on that second match and they were the thing with emp is they're freaking great players and they adapted you had a uh, proton with the four quad goss um Dude. just <laughs> you know like Proton whipped that thing out over the weekend, man, and it just blew people away, uh, including his enemies. Uh, Proton so, is already badass in any mech, but then you, you you see him walk forward with four quad goss. Oh my god! It, it was it was a great set of matches that night. No and doubt. And I I do think that um, it, two to eight and SGR, it could have been either of those teams that also went on, but the difference is EMP made less mistakes and yeah. and those type of players they're gonna do good and you have to you have to be at your a game and so uh yeah i was rooting for as, as soon as sgr got taken out by 228 i wanted 228 to win i thought that would have been fantastic like oh my god like that's the bigger story that's that's what you want to see but they just they those two mistakes i feel like cost them uh the match and it's it's easy to say that from watching right from the from the Mind outside, is always 20, right? yeah, and yeah. it's it, not to experience it. And those, and that's the difference too, is when you play um, a lot of these games in a sort of a competitive sense, you always have a hindsight twenty twenty when you're watching it. But when you're in it, it's you know, no plan survives enemy contact, and no doubt about you it. have to be able to adapt, you have to be able to overcome, and you know, you only have one life on, on that. You only, you know, and uh, yeah, it was great. It was a pleasure. And again, quick shout outs to all the teams, EMP, SJR, and 228th watching those matches was it was fantastic. Like Dude, I had more fun watching this tournament over the weekend than I've had watching any sports events in a decade or more. I, I just loved it. Um I think, 
you know, Mech Warrior is a great game as a spectator event. I think it can be even better. Um, and I hope to see years of this continuing. Uh, definitely shout out to all the teams. Amazing work. All of you, just the best performances. Yeah. Um, and, I was freaking my family out. I was screaming so much in, throughout the weekend. And uh, again, I'd like to give huge props to uh, MDM and, and Bandit. You guys did fantastic Absolutely. casting that. Uh, production quality is fantastic. So glad we're you know able to... Uh, you Bandit's know. out there. Cheers, Bandit. You guys did yeah. an amazing job. Can't wait to see you at MechCon. Uh, also, shout out to PenClick, uh, Salama, who's listening to us on his commute home right now. Um, but also, yeah, if you guys enjoyed the <laughs> recap we did of the qualifiers, we're going to do an another recap I think next week uh, we'll we'll announce it of the uh, regional finals. Not round did, table. That no, not round table. By the way, just a recap <laughs> and a discussion like we did with Bandit with the MDM zero zero and uh, have some fun looking at that and looking ahead at MetCon. But anyway, yeah, great weekend. I literally had so much fun. Uh, people can tell how much I enjoy, uh, you know, the yeah. these comp games and especially the close gameplay is just amazing. Yeah. But anyway, we do need to move on. Um, yeah. Let's see. So speaking of MechCon, that is where we're going to see uh, Bandit and MDM00 soon. We will be there, Phil and myself, uh, also attending Side Strafe, George, Duncan Fish, Ledoux, meet the guy. Finally, he's uh, just an icon in the in the whole franchise. It's going to be awesome. The Beef will be there. Also attending now, Crazy Hippie and Trainzy TV, uh, both regular streamers of MWO. And shout out to Trainzy TV today. He got his partnership finally on uh, Twitch. Very difficult to achieve, and uh, proud of you, guy. That's that's awesome. Or yeah, um, that's a lot of hard work too. Like it's an insane amount of work. <laughs> I think a lot of people are just like, oh yeah, it's no, it, it he, no, it's so much work. Yeah, so great job uh, on you, Trinity. Will be there. A lot of people from the community. BB Wolf will be there. Just tons. I mean, the list is huge. More than we're at, uh, um, you know, the the Steam launch party. More than we're at the even the launch party of the game. Uh, it's just going to be a huge event, including Catalyst, Hairbrain Schemes, uh, tabletop stuff to play, the new Battletech demo to play, uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, it is December 3rd in Vancouver. I'll post a link to the uh, to the purchase site or whatever. And uh, yeah, that's it. Metcon will be there. Hope to see you there. Also, uh, I'm just trying to wrap up now. Uh, interject if you have anything. NGNG is... Uh, we, we are celebrating our five-year anniversary this month, October 31st, five years ago, we launched the podcast. Um, so we're we're doing giveaways. I finally got into your stream, did some giveaways. Yes, we'll you be did. Doing more giveaways. Yes. Uh, I think I gave Huntsman away two packs, Huntsman packs. And then yeah. uh, uh, some, an ult, uh, like MC. a big one. Yeah, MC500 MC here. And yeah. So yeah. we'll be giving away more stuff the rest of this month. Uh, look for Phil or sometimes maybe, we'll see, myself streaming uh, for the rest of this month. And then into November, maybe half of November, I'll still do giveaways uh, for the five-year anniversary. Um, so happy birthday, NGNG, and everybody that's made that possible. Uh, I'm not talking about Phil and myself, uh, other members of the crew throughout the years, and you guys in the community, you're what made it possible. So happy birthday to all of us. Um, and then also, the reason why we're hurrying and we're trying to wrap up, Phil and I are appearing on a podcast tonight. We are going to be on the Game Dev Unchained podcast. I'll put a link to that as well. Uh, literally in, <laughs> they're going to be calling us in like 20, 30 minutes. So we have to get ready for that. Um, but it is a, a really cool, uh, little, uh, podcast about, uh, j just different aspects of the dev industry. They talk with devs from, uh, developers. They talk to game journalists, um, uh, just all kinds of influencers in the industry and so forth. Uh, really cool. Looking forward to that. Uh, I don't think they do anything live, so you'll have to wait till it goes up, but it'll probably go up tomorrow. Um, and I think that's it for the news. Do you have anything else? Um, first off, I just want to say a uh, shout out to all of our new subs. Dude, we're at 175 subs, um, and uh, our goal is 250 for two more emoticons, and then we'll set a new goal. Um, but again, I just want to say thank you to all of our new subs um, and followers to the channel. Uh, you guys are amazing. The guys who show up every single day and just watch me play or derp. I had a fantastic moment a few days ago with <laughs> my cicada, the very beginning of the stream. I do ha I do need to highlight that and get that to YouTube. I am going to do that. Um, that was the derpiest. That was the derpiest moment in my MWO career so far. I, I, I'm going to call it. That was, Oh, you're talking. Remember? About, sorry. I was totally, yes. <laughs> like I was, and I was oh, I'm sitting there going like, Darren's probably laughing so his good. ass off right now. Oh, like, dude. 
Like, um, but yeah, I just want to say of thank all you. All the things. Thank you uh, to everyone out there. Uh, you guys are amazing. Uh, and of course, uh, if you'd like to support the uh, podcast, there's a few ways you guys can do it. And NGNG TV, you can become a sub to the channel. There's information down below. Keep in mind, uh, again, PSA announcement, if you have Amazon Prime already, not pushing Amazon Prime on you, just informing you, you have it already. You can link your Twitch account and be, get a sub to a channel of your choice, NGNG TV, uh, every single month for free. It's part of the, the package deal, and it's called Twitch Prime, uh, and it's if you already have Amazon Prime. Not pushing Amazon Prime on you, but if you already have it, you can get it and you can support. Um, or you may want to consider checking out our Patreon page, too, on information down below. Um, and, of course, uh, I just want to say thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. Brownie is doing good. Thank you guys for... Uh, supporting that uh, yesterday, and of course, uh, here she is with her cone of shame. brownie will live because of you. Yeah, but I uh, just want to say thank you. Great uh, to see you, Mama Bear. And as always, we we do have to get going because uh, we have another podcast to to hop on. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who showed up tonight. Uh, and quick uh, reminder: we do have Randall Bills. He postponed. He'll be on the podcast next week. That is a week from today. Uh, that is the 26th. So October 26th, we'll have Randall Bills. We'll be talking about Catalyst, what they're doing with the tabletop, what they're doing with the uh, novels, and what they're going to do at MechCon. So uh, stay tuned. Tune in for that. And guys, I just want to say thank you again. You guys are amazing. We heart Indeed. you. We heart you so much. We do. This was your local No Guts, No Galaxy MechWare podcast. Signing off for tonight, this is Phil. And this is Darren. Until next time, Mech Warriors. Almost had it. Almost. So close.